everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Mark Harville Art painting tutorial. And what we're doing in this episode is I am painting on a 24 by 36 canvas. Now this is one of those watercolor canvases and I really like to use them because they're just so smooth and I'll still prep the canvas uh, by using some sandpaper um, and further smoothing it out but I like these really smooth grain surfaces specifically in painting these wildlife uh, paintings that are so detailed. Um, I bought this particular canvas at Hobby Lobby so um, just look for the watercolor canvases they're pretty nice. And what I'm doing now is I'm just using my black gesso and I'm just blocking in all the areas that I want to have dark and just kind of get the basic outline here uh, to get us started. So there's going to be a lot of detail on this. Um, I'll be using a lot of small brushes and I'll be using some of my dagger brushes and my and my um, angle brushes uh, to achieve a lot of this fine detail. Now I'm just coming through right now with my tree and texture brush and just adding some texture, getting the basic shadow areas kind of established right now. And I'll be using a lot of glazes in this particular painting, just like uh, you may have seen me do in the last few paintings of wildlife. I've been trying to prepare for a art festival that I've got coming up here in about five weeks. And um, on my last festival, I ended up using, or ended up selling rather, um, a few pieces. So I just need to update some inventory really is what I'm trying to do here. And I've just kind of been on this wildlife painting uh, kick for a while. So um, a few episodes ago I painted a snow tiger and I just thought it'd be nice to, to get a lion as well. So I'm glazing on just some basic color here. I'm, I'm using some cad yellow, a little bit of cad orange, um, and a little bit of burnt on burnt, just kind of blocking in real quickly this simple uh, wash of color over these eyes. And I'm just trying to bring in some, some basic um, reflection into those eyes. And I'll be working a lot more on these eyes throughout this painting. Um, I'll go back and, and I'll play with them a little bit more. These eyes are gonna be um, a primary focal point. I really want them to be engaging. So I'm just coming back here and adding a little bit more texture, kind of establishing where my shadowing is. And I kind of wanted to get this kind of started in black and white and a little bit of gray uh, just to get started. So I'm just using pure titanium white now and uh, bringing in some of the highlights on the hair. And I'll be using this black gessoed background to really help to assist in in creating the separation in the in the main. It's going to be quite a large flowing mane and I want to have quite a bit of detail. So just a simple block in right now of, of where sort of the different clumps of, of the mane are going to be. And just doing all this real quickly uh, with one of my smaller angle brushes. I can get it put on fairly quickly and I'm, and I'm keeping it pretty loose and, and free. I'm not too concerned about any sort of detail. I just want to keep it kind of soft. So I'm kind of moving here rather quickly. I'm adding um, just a little bit more glaze now. I'm, I'm, I'm just using pure black and I'm watering it down. And then I'm also watering down and adding a couple washes of some uh, ochre and some Indian yellow, a little bit of orange. I'll just kind of splatter this on 
real quickly here. I uh, get this, uh, the basic colors kind of where I want them to be. But this is just really just covering up that white. We don't want any of that white canvas showing through. So I'm just going to kind of wash this basic base color, uh, ground color that we're going to use here. So just kind of playing with some different colors here now. And, and this is really just a simple wash. And I'm coming back now and I'm, I've got a comber brush actually, and I'm just kind of combing on some little bit of, of hair around the face, kind of figuring out where the direction is. And I'm just kind of getting this all covered up real fast here now. I want to get a little more texture. I'm bringing in a, a, another wash now. This is just kind of a, a darker wash. I'm using um, more black for that. And I'm going back with that comber brush and I'm adding a little bit more shadowing um, just in the regions I want a little bit darker, but this is also allowing me to kind of begin to start establishing a little bit of of the fur that's going to be around the face and I've got to watch the angles here so you need you need to work with the uh, contours of the lion's uh, face and so I'm making sure that I'm just kind of following the direction of where the hair would be lying and that's that's pretty important for realism so just adding a little bit more individual hairs now just using a small ang angle brush for this. And I'll just continue to build this out real fast. I'm just adding all the, the darker hair fibers at this point in time. And then once I have this all established, I'll go back and do the exact same thing, but I'll be using again, pure white and begin to start uh, adding the individual white hairs. and. I'm not overly concerned about color at this point. Honestly, I've got a basic idea of where the color is going to be. But um, right now, because I'm going to be using lots of glazes, I'm, as you can see, I'm coming back now with pure white and beginning to just add those individual hairs around the face. And then once I go back and glaze again, I can adjust the color with the glazes. So the glazes are going to be very handy and useful for adjusting color and for helping me create more shadowing and more depth. So again, not, not overly concerned about my color at this point in time, which is why I'm kind of going back and, and adding these highlights with pure white. Now I don't typically like to use pure white. Um, in, in, in its truest form, I'll use it as sort of my tonal best and I'll use it for my brightest highlights, but I use it pretty sparingly. But in this particular um, sort of style, since I'm using these glazes, um, I, I like to go in with that, that pure white color and, um, and go ahead and get that added on. And then I'll go back with the glazes afterward and I'll, and I'll get those covered back up again. And acrylic is really great for the glazing process because it dries so fast. Now here's my first glaze. I'm coming back, adding some blacks, adding some umbers. I'm just kind of going through and I'm starting to just cover everything once again, getting it all kind of grayed out. And so the glazes help with that desaturation process. And then I can later go back and add more saturation with, with actual true colors on top of all this. But this is just starting to help to sort of lay in the, uh, the basic depth and, and definition that I'm needing to paint over. So I can start kind of working around these eyes now a little bit and I'm using a, a small rigger brush I believe this is a, a number zero brush, a very small round rigger brush. And I can now come back with um, some, some umber. I've kind of mixed a bit of um, burnt umber with some Indian yellow, a little bit of titanium white, created this really kind of light tannish color. 
and I can come back and really start adding these in all individually. So you can see this is going to take quite a lot of work because I'm painting in each individual strand of fur. Um, so because the portrait of the lion is, is really so large and on such a large surface, um, this will be pretty time consuming. So just make sure that your paint is flowing well. Um, if you're having a problem adding um, your individual strands, then you may just need to kind of use a little bit more water to get it more of an inky consistency. So I can just start, start to kind of pick out and choose kind of with my titanium white, a little bit more longer strands and some smaller ones. Um, around the eyes, basically below the eye and, and around the muzzle and around the nose, you're gonna have a lot of of uh, whitish fur um, that kind of blends into the orange fur. So I'm just kind of getting that figured out right now. And then I can jump back again, start adding some more um, dark. So I'm just gonna be jumping between lights and darks. And then I can go back to the other side of the face and I can begin to add in more of that tan color um, and create some individual strands here. And once I get this figured out, I can start to go over that once again with some more glazes and start to identify the shadows, um, which will be um, getting produced by all that, that large mane. It's gonna be creating a lot of shadowing around the top of the head and and this the light source is going to be coming from the left so the right side of of our lion's face is going to be largely in shadow as well so i'm coming back here just kind of adding a little bit more of that yellow ochre and i'm coming here with another glaze so i'm getting some more shadowing with the glaze and my glaze is going to be kind of a mixture between ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, and a little bit of black, but keeping it quite transparent and about 50-50 water to paint mix on those, on those washes that I'm creating. I can come back here on his chin now. He's got lots of long hairs there on, on his chin, so I just want to get that kind of repainted in, then I'll, I'll cover it back up and then repaint it again. And you'll see me go over um, this process a few times. I'll just recover because as I, as I glaze, what happens is it knocks that color back. So it desaturates it, kind of grays it out. And then when I go back over it again, it creates another layer of depth. And so we need a lot of depth in this painting because there's so much fur and there's a lot of fur that's just tucked way into the back. So this glazing process will really help with that depth. And here I'm going back once again, creating individual hairs with that light um, tan color. Now I'm also using buff white and I just got kind of introduced to buff white here recently, but buff white um, is sort of an off-white it's kind of got a little bit of a warmish hue to it but um, it's just a little bit off-white but it's very opaque just like titanium white and I can use that in lieu of of titanium just to keep my colors very muted and you could create a sort of a buff white um, if you don't have a tube of that uh, just by mixing, more or less mixing um, titanium white with a little bit of raw sienna um, or burnt sienna um, just to keep it a little bit warm. Um, it may even be a, a, a raw umber really more than a sienna that kind of create that buff white uh, color. So going back over here once again using more titanium white because I know I'll be covering that back up with a glaze. But I'll just keep kind of building and rebuilding over um, this fur. And though it's quite repetitive, um, 
it's really important to create that nice thick density. So this is really just me kind of pushing and pulling color, applying color, glazing, knocking it back, reapplying color, reglazing, re-knocking it back. And I'll do that several times. I might even do that four or five times. Um, so a lot of repetition, but this is what really helps with creating that realism and that depth. And using acrylic paints is really great for this technique because it dries so fast. These washes are so thin that um, it really just takes a matter of a minute or so and, and they're ready, they're already dry and I'm ready to go back over it. Now, of course, this same technique would definitely apply to oil paints, but um, if you're using traditional oils, then you're going to have to wait for a long dry time, several hours, maybe even overnight, um, before you can go back and reapply. And so it just takes a lot of time. But it's still possible if you're a patient individual and you're an oil painter that you can uh, use these same these same techniques as well with creating this this nice depth okay so I'm coming back now and just starting to kind of work a little bit into this main a little bit more still using those muted colors um, I'm really going to be using primarily just uh, yellow ochre burnt sienna raw sienna burnt umber raw umber um, I'll be jumping bringing in a little bit of, of some oranges, um, but I was kind of jumping between those colors quite a bit, and I'll kind of add them and glaze with them, and, um, and then use them in their saturated form as well. So I'm adding a few more glazes now, and then I can start to reapply and go over some more of those areas that I know are gonna be, um, gonna be highlighted by that light source. So this does definitely take a lot of time because you are doing a lot of rep repetition. And, um, and so by using these tiny little brushes, and then of course it's such a large surface, it just takes some time. But um, if you really wanna, if you're kind of like me where you like detail, this is gonna certainly be something up your alley. Now when I paint these types of subjects, I want them to look really good both up close as well as at a distance. So um, when, f when folks are viewing the painting, if they want to step up really close, they can, they can step up really close and they can see all the brush strokes and, and it all still looks good and that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, I don't want it to just appear good from a distance. So just taking my time in in applying this technique um, will really achieve some really nice results. I'm starting to go back again and and one thing to keep in mind is I as I start to go back over and reapply these little hairs I don't want to kill all of that work I've done on the underpainting. I've got all those other layers that are desaturated that are kind of in the background so I've got a space out a little bit more the brush strokes because I want some gap between the next layer so that you can see between the gap and you can see all of the underpainting so I'm really paying close attention to my negative space I don't want to cover it up there's been a lot of work that's been involved and this is what's going to help to achieve that depth so again as I is I begin to apply the first couple of layers, it's it's pretty tight, and um, the the brushwork is is pretty tight. It's pretty close together, but as I proceed to add additional layers on top of that, once I've glazed, I'm beginning to separate out a little bit more my brush strokes, so I can see between the layers. Now I'm going back to this muzzle and just adding pure titanium white, just covering all this up in pure white because I'm going to be glazing over it once again and it's going to knock that saturation back 
but th that's kind of the method to the madness here. So it doesn't, you know, it's not going to look right at this point in time, but that's kind of to be expected. So I can bring these these hairs in. Now I'll come back and glaze. I'm glazing over a very white, a very bright yellow because I'm going to have a lot of sun here, and so that yellow is going to really pop because it's got that white undercoat. I can glaze on some dark now, kind of get the shadowing back in as well. That'll desaturate everything a little bit more. Come back with some more shadowing just by using some dark glazes, making them very transparent. Now you can see I've I had to move. This is kind of funny actually because this is this is the Christmas holiday. So I started in my little studio office, and then my son came out from college, um, and we had to put him in my studio because I've got my daughter and her family here as well, and so we're kind of a big big um, busy household right now. And so I had to move to the dining room. So I set up all my paints in the dining room now, and um, and so that's kind of what I'm trying to do. It, the video is a little darker. I was trying to use my um, my photography lighting, um, which was was kind of helpful, but it's not quite as good as the lighting I have in my little studio. Um, so I apologize if this is a little bit darker now to see, but. Um, I had to make room for our our guests in our house, and so my wife uh, relegated me to moving into the dining room. But it's okay. I think it works out fairly well still. Um, I've got my son here for two weeks, so I may still be here when I start my next painting after this one. Um, but that's fine. We making it work. I had to open the blinds and get my lighting set up, but um, but I'm making it work. So here, just going back over, kind of adding more of that that um, next layer where I'm I'm kind of creating looser brush strokes. I've mixed together a little bit of ultramarine blue here. I wanted the shadow section of his muzzle to have a little bit of a blue hue to it and um, kind of keeping it cool and that'll be in contrast to all that that warm yellow uh, glow that's kind of occurring here on on the left side of his muzzle i can come back with some more white and i can just kind of jump around just adding all that that extra texture i'm watching the stroke i'm going to make sure that it's all all those little hairs are facing the right direction, of course. That's really important to think about. And then uh, in the other side of his muzzle here on the right side is going to be a little bit more um, in shadow. So I'm just using a little bit more of, of those tans and, and some of the darker colors and some of the blues. And um, have a little bit of a uh, reflected highlight on on that side as well that I've got to think about. So I add these extra hairs now into his chin. I've just mixed together some light ultramarine blue and white and then a little bit of uh, a light sort of Indian yellow on, on the left side. Now as I work this chin I'm going to go over it several times with glazes and really create some good depth here. I can keep kind of working. I want to make this look really, really bushy. And uh, as I begin to add additional strokes, I'm really spacing them out now because I want a lot of that underpainting to show. And now I can begin to work in more of this process. This is really just a lot of repetition. It's it's uh, kind of what I've already explained here. 
but I'm just bouncing back and forth and I can start working on my mane now. So I'm really starting to block in, I'm starting with um, some blacks and then I'll kind of block in a little bit of the um, different umbers and different siennas, a little bit of the oranges. I'll do some glazes. So there'll be a lot of glazing here as well um, because I need to really knock this back I want to get a lot of this very soft and I want to keep it kind of a little bit blurred um, as I begin to add additional brush strokes on top of that. It'll really help to kind of set that back a little bit more. So coming back here, I've kind of mixed this nice orangey color together just using uh, orange and, and my siennas and um, Kind of jumping around with a little bit of some yellows so just kind of creating some some color but i'm kind of just blocking in the basic clumps here right now and i'm not being all too careful i'm using a large filbert brush and just kind of getting that all in here real quickly then i'll come back with my angle brush and get some more finer strands um, and then i'll end up using my sword dagger brush which is um, a pretty cool brush it's very very long hairs it's very thick and it holds a lot of paint and I can get very very fine details so ultimately I'll I'll pull the sword liner out or the sword dagger out and um, and get some really nice long hairs but right now I'm just coming back with some more glazes kind of getting more of the shadowing in doing some more highlights. This is where I'm using more buff titanium and adding that kind of around certain areas where I want it to really be kind of popping a little bit more, but keeping them still fairly and fairly muted um, since they're going to be more into the shadow area. There's still a lot of highlights, even though they're muted highlights, they'll be still quite a few highlights in the shadow areas as well. Start kind of working here on the jawline now a little bit more. The, these hairs are going to also be in shadow. I want to keep them pretty soft. So I'll go back with several glazes here as well and keep that pretty muted because I want to keep a very, a pretty nice contrast here with a lot of shadowing. Um, that's being caused by this very, very large majestic mane. So I'm coming back now with my angle brush and just creating some nice strands, nice long strands of fur. And I can really kind of start to look at the negative space Make sure I'm not covering everything. I'm covering some orange glazes, bringing back in some some black. I've actually pulled out a color called Bone Black. It's a really nice color because it's it's an opaque black. Most blacks come very. I'm sorry, I I mistake what I say. It's a very transparent black. Most blacks are are quite opaque, but Bone Black is a transparent black and it's a really great color I can use and apply and it's not gonna cover up everything so you can still see a lot of the work underneath but it does a great job bringing in some shadowing. So I start to work on my whiskers now and I wanted to make sure that they contrast very well with that all that dark uh, shadowed underpainting behind it. That really helps them to pop out quite a bit and helps that muzzle, that whole nose and muzzle to really just kind of come out. Start to add those. I'm using my sword dagger uh, for this as well. Um, and, and that's such a great tool because you can create such fine, long, sharp lines with it. I ended up buying that from, um, I believe I bought it from maybe Rosemary and Company, but they're, they're pretty easy to find online. All right, so I'm adding some more glazes with that bone black. I'm working on my eye a little bit more. I wanted to really get these eyes 
uh, get a little more uh, yellows and oranges and create a little bit more separation. I wanted to have that kind of that sunburst. It's a little bit hard to tell with the particular lighting here being that I'm in the, the living room, but um, I really wanted these eyes to have a lot of detail, a lot of character, um, because again, they're, they're just an important focal point for the painting. Go ahead and get the other eye as well. So I'm just kind of refining them, bringing a little bit more shadowing to help it look a little rounder. Got my family kind of walking around upstairs, kind of making some noise. You might be able to hear that in the background. So I'm kind of hitting that refining point now. I'm just adding some other small little details, kind of stepping back, looking at everything. So I'm coming, kind of coming to the end of the painting now. And um, I certainly appreciate you tuning in. Please subscribe if you've not done so. Um, I appreciate all your comments. I appreciate when you share the work if you like it. That helps me to build the community a little bit. And um, yeah, I'm just getting some of this final lighting out. A really bright yellow now, because I really wanted that to, to jump out at us. So I'm just kind of being very selective about where I'm putting that. We get some final glazes here. And uh, we're just about done. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll look forward to coming back next time with a brand new painting. I've got to get a couple more done for this art festival, so uh, trying to think about what, what I want to do next here. Maybe some more animals, I don't know. I've been enjoying doing a lot of this animal work. So now just kind of doing a little bit of refining adding some final touches, and uh, we can just about call our lion complete. I'm hoping that this was a helpful video for you, and um, perhaps you can apply some of these techniques into your next masterpiece. Get this signed now, and I'll be able to sign off. This is me uh, coming over here and signing off and thanking you and just waving goodbye. Thanks so much for tuning in.